Welcome to Behind the Muscle Podcast. Today's guest is an IFBB pro. Today's guest is Todd Whitting. Todd, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Appreciate the time. For, for sure, man. So uh, you are uh, five weeks out for making your IFBB pro debut. Um, so I'm excited to kind of get into all of that talk here uh, in, in a little bit. But before we do, I would love to know, Todd, who are a few of your favorite bodybuilders of all time? Yeah, so the guys that come to mind for me, first, Dorian Yates. Um, you know, I think he's just, you know, known as, as one of the greatest of all time, kind of like the mass monster era, uh, first guy of the mass monster era, but, but just too like his, his condition and hardness was, was night and day next to the other guys. Right. Um, so he was just very unique like that. Um, and then Jay, you know, I, I grew up idolizing Jay Cutler um in his story and just his persistence of always kind of falling short and then finally finally getting his his day as uh as mr olympia and losing it and then regaining it right so he's just he's just always been a great ambassador of the sport so like those are kind of like my two guys that i've always looked up to you 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 can't go wrong with dorian and you can't go wrong with jay that's that's for sure so I would I would say those two are probably the 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 uh the ones that are brought up on on the most episodes. I've said this before, and yeah. maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't. But at some point, I gotta count up. Maybe maybe when I once I get up to to episode two hundred, which I'll, I'll be there very shortly. But I gotta count up how many times Dorian has come up and and Jay as as favorite bodybuilders because it's it's literally probably. I don't know every other uh, sure. com conversation that, that I have, they, they come up, but rightfully so, you know, so. Yeah. But. yeah. So uh, Todd, what, what age did you start lifting weights? And then uh, why did you start lifting weights at that specific age? Uh, so I started lifting weights in high school. I think it was like kind of my maybe sophomore or junior year. Um, just kind of started doing it for for sports right like that was kind of the time that that the weight room opened up to athletes um so learned the basic lifts um you know from coaches that didn't necessarily know what the heck they were talking about um but i really enjoyed it right and then uh my brother was a few years older than me and and to be honest with you like he he was blessed with more of the genetics in the family right like he's he's like the six foot six one dude with broad shoulders his shoulders were like cannons right when he was training in, in younger um was just a, a, a genetic freak right like he would have been like steve kuklo sort of like just big and broad and aesthetic um so I, I always like looked up to him, right? Because he was like gigantic to me at the time. Um, so so he kind of inspired me to always just like catch up to Big Bro, right? Like I always kind of wanted to wanted to have that um, that look that he had. Excellent, man. So um, I want to get a little bit more into your uh, childhood, your upbringing, your your backstory um, now uh you're currently in michigan is that kind of where you were born and raised then yeah yeah so i was born and raised in uh, a, a city called frankenmuth michigan i don't know if you've ever heard of it nope it's kind of it's kind of this odd um it, it's one of the higher like it's one of the more highest tourist attraction towns in michigan um and it's really hard to explain they call it Michigan's little Bavaria. It's like this German town. And we have these two humongous restaurants that serve like more chicken dinners than any, <laughs> than any uh, restaurant in, in, in the country, I, I believe. Okay. It's in, 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 we just have like all these like bizarre shops. We have Bronner's, which is called, it, it's the, uh, world's largest christmas store that's open year round 
Um, they've got these huge hotels with water parks, um, festivals damn near every single weekend of the year. So it's kind of like this, uh, kind of like people, when you tell people like in Michigan, like you're from Franklin, they're always like, Oh, I didn't know people actually like lived there. Okay. Right. Cause it's kind of, it's, it's different. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure there'll be people on the, that listen to the podcast that are, that are familiar and probably be like, Oh, same thing. Like, Oh, that, that must be weird growing up there. Uh, but I, yeah, now I live a little bit, but like, I'm like 45 minutes South more towards Detroit from, from, from Franklin. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I was going to ask you then your, your hometown, it, it's, it's pretty close to Detroit then or what? Yeah. So it's like an hour and a half from Detroit. So I'm kind of in the middle of my hometown in Detroit okay. is where I, Cool. Yeah. Cause I, I lived out in Detroit for about a year and uh, I guess that's kind of always when I think of Michigan, that's always my, my reference point is, is where, where, where at in, in terms of Detroit, you know? So, but yeah. Okay. So you grew up in, uh, you grew up in, in Michigan. Um, you mentioned sports earlier. Why don't you uh, expound a little bit more? Uh, what sports did you play? Um, you mentioned your, your, your uh, bigger brother. Was it just you two? Did you have other siblings? A relationship with your parents just paint that picture of your childhood a little bit up to about high school for us Todd please yeah I mean my whole my whole childhood was all about sports and being competitive um and really like playing sports against my older brother who was like three years older than me um so it was like I was always playing against him and his friends so it was always challenging to to keep up with with them um so it kind of like, I think instilled like this, uh, competitive work ethic, like I, I always kind of being the underdog kind of guy. Um, uh, so it always, I always kind of had that mentality. Um, but pre I mean, I'm sure it helped me and toughened me up in the long run. Um, but yeah, it was, so it was just me and my brother, um, and my mom and dad and, uh, is, is sports wise. Like when I was younger, I played everything. Um, soccer baseball um football up until a certain point um basketball um but then like once I got older actually I, I just played basketball in high school and golf which is uh that was kind of like my thing actually when I was younger I I was really competitive at, in golf and was really good um which is kind of a lot of people are like, Oh, no way. Like you don't look like a golfer now. Um, and I'm not, I can't really, <laughs> can't really swing very well now. Um, but there's a lot that transitions, right? Like it's an individual sport. It's very much what you put in is what you get out. Right. Like I, I think things like track and probably it's like tennis, golf, bodybuilding, I think they all kind of are, are, are very unique in that way where it's like, you can't rely on your team. You just, it's just you, right. It's like, it's what you put in, what you're doing behind the scenes. Um, and, and that's what makes the difference between winning and losing. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's great. There's, there's a, a lot to be said about growing up playing sports and that translating into, into bodybuilding, especially like you mentioned the, the individual sports like golf and, and things of that nature. Now, um, parents, uh, what was your relationship like with your parents and, um, what, what did they kind of, uh, pass on to you or instill in you that you kind of look back and say, man, I, I got that definitely from, from my parents. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I had a, I guess maybe what you would call just like a nor pretty normal childhood. Um, yeah, my parents both, you know, my, my dad worked at GM, right? Like the auto industry is, is big around here. He was, you know, a, a blue collar guy working every day at GM. Um, my mom was a teacher, you know, I just saw them working every day. I saw them working and taking care of a house and taking care of things and, and being responsible people and, you know, not getting into trouble and, yeah, you know, it just, it, I mean, it paved a way of like, you know, good values and um, work ethic. And, 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 and I think it was, you know, I, I had a pretty, pretty good upbringing. Um, it just set me up to be able to do whatever I wanted to do in life. 
Excellent, man. Um, academically, having a, a, a mother that was a teacher, uh, were academics something uh, with you and your brother that were uh, pushed pretty hard, were expectations pretty high? What did that look like for you? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. She, so she was like, let's, she was a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> so, so it wasn't anything too intense, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, it was always important. I, I think I always kind of knew that I, I was going to go to college and get an education. And that's how I would um, make a, a living for myself. And, and uh, yeah, so that... Yeah, so that worked out, right? Like I went to college and have a degree and have a normal job. Um, so yeah, that 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 all kind of worked out for me. Now, uh, what were you thinking about? You want to do with your life when you were in high school, and then you mentioned going to college. Uh, were those thoughts in high school kind of the direction your life uh, went, or did you go to college and switch majors? Things change. Why don't you start? unpacking uh how you kind of got into your current career talk about college uh just just uh paint that picture for us yeah so like when I was in high school like I said golf was like my life right um I I played competitive golf I worked at the golf course um so it was like my summers were were spent at the golf course all day every day um so I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so I, I went into a program uh, at a college called Ferris State University. It's up north uh, in Michigan. Uh, and they have a very unique program. I think there's only a handful of them in the country. It's called professional golf management, right? Where it's like you become a professional golf instructor, um, but you also get a management degree business management degree um so that's i was like okay i guess i'll just do this right like that's all i know at this point um it is it, so like i i went into that it was all right but i didn't really love it i kind of you know you, 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 through my first year there i kind of learned of the the different avenues you can go in career paths and i was just like man i don't i don't know that i want to be a assistant pro working 60 hours a week, making 30 grand a year, right? <laughs> like, like, I'm like that, that, that doesn't really sound too glamorous to me because I've seen these guys doing that. So I'm like, I think this is right. Like maybe isn't the industry for me. So I came closer to home, went to uh, a, 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 another small school that was um, the Saginaw Valley State University, um, which is in Saginaw, Michigan. Um, and that, that was closer to home where I could just commute. And, and I, I still ended up getting a business degree. Um, but it kind of kept the doors open to do anything. Um, yeah, so I had various, uh, jobs and now I work for, I don't know if I can say the company I worked for. I, let's just say it's one of the large shipping companies, uh, that started on the express network. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so now I'm, I'm, I'm a sales executive for um, for FedEx. I'll just say that. I don't think there's any reason I can't say that. Um, so, yeah, so I, I handle different businesses and um, help to uh, manage their shipping needs and um, get get new companies set up or transition from the competitors and, uh, you know, shameless plug I, I know there's a lot of uh a lot of supplement industry and uh clothing line industry type folks out there in the fitness industry you need to ship something hit me up <laughs> there there we go there's life's more about uh who you know and not what you know right todd that's right, that's right. <laughs> um that that's awesome man uh, i i think that's uh you know something that um uh, is, is really beneficial when you're pursuing this, this, this bodybuilding, uh, goal of this bodybuilding dream is, you know, to have some sort of financial stability, you know, have, I'm, I'm assuming you have all the retirement benefits, insurance and all that. Like, yeah, I think that's something that within bodybuilding, a lot of people have to realize is like bodybuilding 
uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a passion. It's, it's, a, it's a hobby. 99.9% of us are never going to make a dime from it. Um, I mean, literally we're, we're lifting weights and, and, you know, you know, flexing our muscles on a stage. So my point that I'm trying to get at is like, I think a lot of the younger people getting into bodybuilding, it's, it's, it's really important for them to realize like, Hey, you don't necessarily have to have a plan B because if you really want to go for it, go for it. Like, you you never want to be a dream killer, but you know, at least have, you, you've got to have some sort of financial stability because bodybuilding costs a lot of money, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you said, you hit it. This is a passion and it's a hobby. Um, but would we like, I think we would all love to make our uh, make money off of bodybuilding right like if, if this is all i uh, all i could do that would be my dream job um but i think that's for the on that's probably for the elite top 10 percent less um but you know what the, the industry shifted right like I, I tell these younger guys now right like it's 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 not what I saw when I was getting into bodybuilding of do well on stage, win shows and things will come, right? Like opportunities will come with, you know, whether it's supplement contracts or magazines or what, what, whatever it may be. Um, now it's like the stage I feel like is, is a very minor part of, of, of the whole thing. It, it, it's, you don't even have to be on stage, right? Like a lot of, a lot of these younger guys and girls are just making a living off of being fitness influencers, right? Like it, it's not about competing. It's about how many followers do you have? And and that's where the value is for, for, for anybody now. Right. So it's just like, man, that that's gotta be important. If you want to be, if you want to make bodybuilding your career, well, you better be a hell of a, a marketing whiz on youtube and instagram and facebook and uh twitter and uh whatever else there is out there nowadays right no you're 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 right uh you know got it i guess the 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 takeaway from 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 this is you, you, at the end of the day you've got to have money coming in from somewhere do, <laughs> doing doing something hopefully legally to support this passion, right? <laughs> That's an expensive hobby at that for sure. So, um, okay, very cool. Now, uh, let's let's transition into bodybuilding talk. That's why we're here. Um, so, you started lifting weights in high school. Um, when did when did bodybuilding really capture you and and catch your attention, and you start moving your life in the direction of becoming a, a bodybuilder, Todd? so i guess yeah it just started as like lifting and enjoying it and it was fun um and i liked the results that i was getting um but i never really thought about competitively bodybuilding um then when i was in college i worked with the guy and, and he had done a couple shows and like we went to the gym a few times together and he's like todd like if, if you don't if you don't compete, like you're doing a disservice to the bodybuilding community. I'm like, what? Do you, I don't even know what that means, but I don't even like, I'm like, well, what do I do? He's like, well, there's a show like in 10 weeks. I I'll write you a diet and just do it. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, I'll do it. Right. So like I, I did this and um, it was the natural Northern Michigan. And I was a middleweight. I was like 174 pounds, I believe, like that morning to weigh in. Um, and I ended up winning my class and I won the overall. And I was like, oh, this, this worked out pretty well, right? <laughs> like, this was kind of cool. So, um, yeah. So then I just like progressed to like I, a couple years later, um, I did the Michigan state bodybuilding championship that was 2010. Um, and I, I moved up to light heavyweight. So I was like 197 pounds, something like that, I believe. Um, 
and I ended up winning the light heavyweight division. I won the overall um, at the Michigan State Championship. And this was like, that was back when, like, I hate to say, it, but bodybuilding is kind of dying a little bit locally, I feel like. Back then, that's when bodybuilding was was like a big deal for like that the michigan state championship was a big deal like you had 15 20 guys in every weight class um and and, and it was it was like an honor to to even go and compete at that show let alone win it right like that was like a big deal at the time um in retrospect i, I wasn't as good as i thought i was at that point in time so like the next year I, I thought I could do junior nationals and I went and got smoked. I wasn't ready, but it was a good experience for me where I was like, okay, now I know how much better these guys are than what I, than what I am right now. Right. Like I, I gotta, I gotta get to work. Um, but you know what? It, I didn't take it nearly as seriously as I, as I needed to back then either. Um, you know, like I've learned through, through time, probably the hard way, like, like that, that was, uh, that was an eye opener of like how serious some of these guys take bodybuilding. And for me at that point in time, it was like, yeah, I, I consistently lifted throughout the year and trained as hard, hard and heavy. Um, but my diet was kind of all over the map um I, I i didn't consistently track and monitor my my direction that i was going right like i was just eating big to get big in in, in truth be told too like drinking on the weekends and you know partying during the summer and like taking a step back every weekend right and, and, uh, and, and finally just kind of like realized like, okay, this shit ain't cutting it. Right. And I'm not gonna, I'm not going to go and get embarrassed. Right. Like I'm not going to continue doing this and get embarrassed. Um, so I, I either need to take this more seriously or there's no, no point in, in, in pursuing this anymore. Right. Um, so I, so I, I started taking things a lot more seriously um, and, and, and just kind of started treating off season more like diet season. Um, and even that, right. Like that's been an evolution over, over the years. Um, you know, in the beginning it was like, okay, off season was 60, 70% on plan now over the past two years it's like i'm 90 percent, maybe more on plan year round right and i've just learned like how important that is right and we can't go back in time but i really really try to preach to these young guys um that's that that's where the that's where the difference is that's the dif that's the difference maker unless you're like the genetic elite that's what you have to do to make progress is take your off seasons way more seriously yeah no that's that's well said now i want to take a quick step back i'm very curious um this this diet that your friend wrote up for you for your first competition do you remember the specifics of it if so uh shed a little light on that because i'm sure it was probably pretty pretty wild wasn't it you know i could probably dig up in a folder i i have like all my five like i have every diet in this folder but i can tell you i can tell you that it consisted of not nearly enough food right like i was i was starving myself um in retrospect did i get shredded for you know for a uh, at that point in time, you know, a, a natural bodybuilder. Yeah. Um, it worked, but could I have been better? Sure. You know? Um, but yeah, there wasn't, a, it was, it was really low. It was like, not a whole lot of food, right? Like, you know, it was like every fourth day I would get 
some carbs and that would be like one big meal of carbs. I, I think, I think that's exactly how it went. It was like a, a three day rotation diet where it was like a really low day. And then there was like a day that had a little bit of, it was low, but it had like some extra fats. Then it went back to a really low day. And then I had a day that had higher carbs, but we're talking like high carbs was like maybe 200 grams of carbs, which is now like my low day. Right. Um, so yeah, it, it was, it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough. Um, do you remember, uh, the, the first bodybuilder, like IFBB pro that you actually saw like on, on a magazine cover or were, were exposed to? And if so, who, who was that Todd? I mean, I, you know, the first like thing that comes to mind are like those muscle tech ads back in like the two thousands, right? Like, like you had like Jay and Branch and like King Kamali comes to mind. Um, Johnny Jackson. Like that was kind of like the era Dexter, you know, like that was kind of like my era where I got really intrigued and interested in bodybuilding though. Like that was the group of guys that was like, Oh shit. Like that's like, that's some serious shit right there. Right. Like, I don't know if I could ever get that big, but I'm sure it's all going to try. Yeah. Those, uh, uh, how, how old are you? If you don't mind me asking. So I'm 38 now. Okay. So I'm 35. So you got three years on me, but we, we grew up kind of in that, in that same era. Um, sure. though, yeah, those, we, we could sit here and reminisce for, for, for days and days. I do have to ask you, do you, do you remember the, the, the animal pack ads with like Frank McGrath and all them guys? Oh yeah. Those were great. The tiny little writing. Right. And you had to like, it was so hard to read, but you read those stories. Those were great. Oh man. I, I dude, I tell you what, I would go to animalpack.com back in those days. And I would go to, you know, the, the high school, uh, you know, uh, library or, or wherever I could find a computer. And I'd, I'd print off the articles by, you know, they, they all had, uh, different, they had like, uh, pseudo names or nicknames and stuff. And dude, I, I would like, I'd sit on the toilet, man. And I just read those. And I would just be like, dude, like, this is so hardcore. And, you know, the website was all black and white. The, their videos right. on YouTube were black and white. And like, you know, you have Frank McGrath and Evan Senapani. It's like, dude, like, this is like, this is hardcore. Like, and it, uh, it was, it was like, it was a cultural thing. Like they did, they had the, you know, they had the cage at the, the Arnold. They, they did yeah, like, in person events, you know, uh, at gyms. It was dude. Like it was, it was awesome. Those are some Those good, were days. good days. Right? Like I, I think about that and it's like, it's so different now. Like, you know, like being excited and picking up a magazine and going through it page by page front to back. Right. Like, that's what I used to do. I used to read every single thing in those magazines. I, I mean, I, 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 I couldn't even tell you the last time I picked up a bodybuilding magazine now. Well, I, I mean, I think muscular development is, is the last one out there. And dude, I remember it used to be 600 pages, dude. I was like, dude, this is awesome. You could just see all the pictures and just so much content. I think it's probably down to maybe 20 pages now. So I, I wouldn't even waste the time or the money to, to pick one up if I could find one, but you yeah, know. So. that's too bad. Anyways, too we're, we're, uh, we're, we're old timers, man, in our thirties. We're old school. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So um, before we get back into competing, I want to ask you um, how has your uh, training evolved over the years? So you, you had kind of more sports specific training in high school and then once you kind of got into bodybuilding and then what's it kind of like current day. So talk about the evolution of, of that training, please. Yeah. So, I mean, it, in the beginning, it was, it was all about like more like power lifting and how much can you bench and you know, that I think that's kind of how we all started. Right. Um, what's your max on everything like it. And, and, and that's all cool, but the reality of it is I wish I could go back and like not train that way 
because I hurt myself and bang myself up too many times, um, you know, just like my hips and my knees and a couple of quad t- tweaks and a, a shoulder that still bothers me. Right. And it's just like, man, if you could just go back in time and, and like have the knowledge that you have now. And that's what I try to like. I try to preach to these younger guys now. And, and it's like, I don't know if they're listening or not. Right. But like, okay, here, here's how like I really should train. Right. Like, don't, don't worry about what your max is. Like, that has no relevancy to what you're trying to do if you're trying to be a bodybuilder. Um, but yeah, so it was always just like about this high, you know, like how heavy can you lift? sort of thing um and now i it, you know i've kind of evolution to trying to lift smarter not harder i mean there's still a lot of intensity there but it's like reserved for a few sets per workout right um so like in the past it was just like pound 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 haphazardly right with no strategy and now it's it's well it's it's also like working around like okay what exercises don't irritate my shoulder what exercises don't make my knees hurt for the next 10 days you know so it's like okay pick the exercises now that work without hurting me and then progress in in basically I guess I, you could say I'm a little like in the progressive overload family, right. Of like, okay, every week I'm going to have like this top set and I want to progress in either weight or repetitions or even just perform better repetitions. Like I, I find, I, like, I think that that's progress in itself, right. Um, improving your form. So that's kind of where I'm at now. Yeah. What's, uh, what's kind of been your uh, current training split, uh, here recently? Um, so like right now I I'm, I'm just doing, um, legs push and pull and, 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 you know, and then an off day and then back at it. Right. But then it, it varies, right? Like, so like my leg day, you know, the first one is going to be more quad dominant the next roll you know the next cycle around is going to be glute and hamstring dominant push is going to be like okay this is more focused on chest less shoulders the next next workout is pull back on the chest volume and increase on the shoulder um and then and then back one day i i throw in deadlifts on my back day the other day it is not going to have that right so it's a little bit higher volume of of rows and, and uh pull downs type exercises and then i and then you know i do tries and buys on push and pull respectively and that kind of evolved i was just talking about this today you know i never used i used to always kind of have the typical bro bro split um but a, so I, I broke my arm back in it was before I even ever started competing. I broke my humerus um, in like 2006, I want to say. And I had some hardware put in there. And then just last year or about a year and a half ago, this elbow was just irritating the crap out of me, right? And I thought it was just like tendonitis, tennis elbow sort of thing, got some injections, didn't really work didn't really help um so so i eventually ended up having a a, like an arthroscopic surgery where they cleaned up some scar tissue and some bone fragments that were just kind of floating around in there um and and they shaved some bone spurs that were on the inside and outside of the joint right there so they cleaned that up and um and then six eight weeks later i felt good as new but kind of like before and after like i I, you know the the movements that hurt me the most were biceps and triceps right kind of that single joint movement um 
so so I couldn't really do those. So it was just like, well, if I want to train, I can just do, I can do some pushing, I can do some pulling, and I can do legs. So I like kind of like pulled pulled arms out of there for for quite some time because I was battling this injury, and now I've just thrown in th- thrown in you know biceps with my pull day and uh, triceps with my my push day, and you know I'm getting plenty of volume that way. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> let's get back. Uh, let's take a step back into uh, competing competition talk. So. Where we left off, I think you had competed at uh, uh, Junior USA's or Junior Nationals. Uh, why don't you pick us up from there? Um, how did you kind of progress then into getting into some of the pro qualifiers and things of that nature? Yeah, so like uh, 2012, I did North Americans. That would have been my first pro qualifier attempt. Um, that was the year Dallas McCarver won the overall um i i i think i got like 10th place right i was like the end of the second call out and that sucked right where i was just like okay this feeling of being in the second call out i never want to have that ever again right so once again back to the drawing board of like okay like i I feel like i made a lot of progress um but I'm still getting overlooked, right? Like I need to, I need to do something better. So I guess I took three years off 2015. I came back um, and it was at the top of the heavyweight and I got third place. So I got, I got first call out kind of in the center. I mean, to me, that was like, uh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not a complete failure. I, I have something to, to, you know, to offer here. Um, so that, that was pretty cool just to get, you know, third place at a pro pro qualifier. Um, so I thought, uh, you know, I thought, okay, well, I, I'm, I'm close here. Well, the next show that I did from 2015 wasn't until 2020. Um, I guess a number of events happened during that time. Um, had a child, right. I had, I had, I had a daughter and then uh, went through a divorce and kind of the slew of, of crap that follows with that. Right. So it's like there, there was, you know, a chunk of time there of a few years where competing just wasn't in the cards. Right. Like I was just, I was just kind of treading water with as far as the gym goes, right? I was still going to the gym. I was still training hard. I was still eating, you know, 80% what I should be doing. Um, but, I, but I, I mean, I, don't know, I hate to say I couldn't do it, but like all, all odds were against me, right? I had, I had other priorities that like needed to be addressed um, at the time. So, yeah, so like I, I, be, I didn't compete um, after that 2015 third place at North Americans until 2020, I did North Americans and that's where I actually won my pro card. Um, so I won the 35 and over heavyweight and I won the 35 and over overall. And then I went to the open and, and I, I took third behind Martin Fitzwater and Jordan Janowitz. Um, And, and I, and I, you know, I, that in that, like, I feel, I'm not saying I could have, should have beat them, but I'm saying that I, I completely screwed up my peaking, right? Like I peaked like shit. Like I was flat and way over dehydrated and just didn't didn't look my best at all to be completely honest with you right like I left a lot on the table where I feel fortunate that I got my pro card but so much I I, I could have done so much better right like so I I I I've 
kind of got something to prove that that wasn't nearly my best. That was far from my best. Um, so that's, that's what this year is all about for me is, is really, really showing like that, that was, that was like, I eked the pro card out, but that, that was, that was not, not even close to what I've got to offer. Now, uh, Jordan, uh, he just made, recently made his pro day de- pro debut in the 212 division he's been on the podcast a couple times and uh i mean he 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 definitely impressed people now he's out of michigan too isn't he yeah yeah jordan's a friend of mine right um yeah so we just did a guest posing together uh at a local show it was the week after his uh his his show which was phenomenal right for him to get that third place in in and not like third place and got smoked by the first and second guys. Like, right. Like I, I think he, he could have, he could have arguably gotten first or second. And I don't think anybody would have been shocked to be honest with you. Um, like it was really, really close. I was super proud of Jordan. I was super excited for him. Um, and it, and it, you know, I've competed against him a couple of times and it's, it's cool now to be like, rooting for him rather than like competing against him um so yeah so we we, we've become a little bit uh closer over the past couple of years which is cool and i'm yeah i'm really happy for him and and then you know martin he just uh i don't know he's competed several times but his last showing was i mean he got he got second place at texas pro right so i mean yeah. he's he's on he's on his way as well so you're you're up next uh todd right yeah i mean i i god i hope so i i i'd like to think that i'm on par with those guys um and i guess we'll find out in five weeks right like either everybody's gonna say no this guy's a freaking idiot he's way off or they're gonna say oh shit i never heard of this guy he uh he, he kind of knew what he was talking about right he backed it up i'm hoping that's i'm hoping that's the way that it's gonna go yeah okay i want to i gotta ask you this question i was literally just earlier today watching um uh uh who who uh, uh D- dallas mccarver i was literally just watching a dallas mccarver video on youtube i mean <laughs> earlier today and yeah. uh so going back to two, 2012 north americans yeah. Uh, I mean, I think most of us that love bodybuilding saw his potential. He was hyped to be, uh, you know, possibly the next Mr. Olympia at some point. Um, and, uh, what, what was it like being able to see him in person as an amateur? I mean, was, was, was he everything that people said he was even, even back then? Well, yeah. I mean, I remember watching that in person and, um, the two's genetics is his just, his structure was phenomenal. Right. And, and at that point in time, he wasn't nearly as big as, um, as he got, but I'll, I'll back up a little bit. And I don't know if everybody's going to agree with, with me on this, but he shouldn't have won. In my opinion, if you actually, if you look at, uh, at that, I think they changed the rules, right? Dan Decker. I don't know if you remember who Dan Decker was. But Dan Decker won – they were in the middle, right, for the Open. But Dan Decker won, like, the 35 and over. And, and because they because he won that, they pulled him out of the Open. Hmm. But from watching it as a fan, like, in the crowd, I saw the comparison. And I, and I, I hit Dan winning. Hmm. So, I mean, you know, if history goes back – I mean, I'm not saying – you know, Dan Decker is a better, better bodybuilder than what Dallas McCarver was. But um, on that day, I think Dan Decker would have, would have, should, would have, could have, should have beat him. Um, but yeah, I mean, Dallas was un, undeniably just a, a freak though, still right in his own regard. But Dan was phenomenal that day. Um, but yeah, he, he, he was phenomenal. And I, 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 I had a feeling that he would end up being pretty damn good. Um, and then he ended up being really damn good, um, like legendary. So it's pretty cool to see um, 
to be able to say like, yeah, I saw him like in person, like when he won his pro card. Cool. I just had to ask that because, you know, uh, I mean, to be able to stand on a, on a stage, you know, with somebody like, like Dallas McCarter, you know, whether it was on the pro level or um, amateur level, it's, it's just kind of, kind of, kind of cool. You know what I mean? Just kind of me memory stuff that man, looking back like Dallas McCarver now, you know, obviously he was, uh, you know, uh, coached, uh, mentored, uh, best friends, something like that with, uh, Matt Jansen. We kind of see where Matt's at now as a, as a business uh, owner and as a, as a coach, obviously. And it's, it's just cool to talk to people like yourself that kind of were a part of history, so to speak. Right. Sure. Yeah. It was cool to see. And yeah, you don't realize you're part of history at the time. Um, but then looking back, it's like, Oh yeah, that was a, that was a cool moment. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Um, I want to, I want to lightly touch on this and then I want to uh, kind of get into co talking about your current coach and, and talking about your pro debut. Uh, but I, I've got to ask this because you said that you, you competed in 2020 uh, 2020 was a crazy year for everybody. All the shows are getting pushed back and all that different stuff. If I remember correctly, uh, North Americans that year it was like outside underneath the tent. That's where that's where uh, Nick, Nick Walker won the overall. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So my question is, you're you're in Michigan. Uh, Michigan was uh, highly locked down. I thankfully uh, was in Iowa and still am in Iowa at the time, so it was pretty normal here. But Michigan was crazy from everything that I heard. How did you kind of navigate that? And then after, you know, however many years of five year layoff, get on stage. I mean, just that in itself was an accomplishment, let alone getting your pro card. So how did you navigate that, Todd? Well, so, so like for me, my, my job, we all, it was like, I don't know what year did it start in 2019, was it? Or was it 2020? No, it's about, it was, it started popping off in early March of 2020. Yeah. March, 2020. Yeah. So March, 2020 is when the lockdown started where like I was working from home. I was sitting in this office right here for two years. Um, yeah. So I wasn't out and about seeing customers or going to an office or anything like that. I was here for two years. Um, and there was, there were probably six months, maybe less. I mean, where where the gyms were all closed right um it i think it was a little bit less because well it was supposed to be more but i knew of a few gyms that kind of like were still open it, 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 it you just yeah you kind of had to know right um but luckily i have some equipment here i've got enough equipment in the basement where i was still able to get good workouts right i mean it's not everything that i need but it was enough to bench, squat, deadlift, do some rows, do dumb anything you can do with dumbbells. I've got dumbbells up to a hundred. I've got, um, you know, you can do plenty of thing with a plenty of things with barbells and dumbbells, right? Um, so I was able to to still navigate things for a few months there while while gyms were closed. It was probably actually really good for me as far as not having to travel and travel with food um i was able to be a lot more on point and actually enjoy my food rather than taking you know my cooler with cold food right like eating cold chicken and rice in my car sucks right so i was able to adhere to my diet a lot more easily um but yeah there was a few months there where where I was just at home. Um, then gyms opened back up and, and I was just kind of like, man, I, I had the itch. They're still having shows. Well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give this another run. Right. And I was, I think, well, I guess I would have been 36 uh, at the time. So, yeah. So I was like, well, I can do masters. I can do the open. Um, I'm just going to do it. Right. Um, and it was, it was actually a huge show, right? Like there was a ton of competitors and you're right that in Pittsburgh, they had a huge tent set up out in a parking lot, like for a festival, right. Well, they had a, a, 
you know, a, a stage and a backdrop and two tables there with some photographers and judges. No, nobody in the, nobody could even like sit there and watch. Right. So you could watch the live stream from your hotel room and, uh, dude, it was, it was, I remember there was like rocks on the stage. You'd be walking out on stage and step on a rock and be like, Oh shit. Right. Like it, it was, it was, it was a gnarly experience. Right. But, but there was a ton of competitors and another iconic moment, to be honest with you, right. Like meeting Nick Walker, right. Seeing him in person, honest to God, instagram youtube they don't even give him they don't do him justice really i'm serious like i I, i've seen quite a few pro bodybuilders quite a few pretty damn good bodybuilders in person i've i've never seen anything like him before honestly and he's a good dude too he's a really good guy so i I mean i'm 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 a fan <laughs> and it was, it was cool to see that and, uh, and, and get to get to witness him win the overall there. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of ironic, you know, bringing up Dallas McCarver connect with Matt Jansen, Nick Walker yeah. at the time was coached by Matt Jansen. I mean, you've, you've kind of, I mean, and, and you've had some years off in, in your competition, but man, some of these uh, pro qualifiers that you've uh, been a part of, you've, you've really, uh, you, you've you've really seen some some pretty iconic guys turn pro and and sure. kind of cool yeah. right as like you said as a fan yeah heck yeah heck yeah i mean it's been really cool yeah hopefully maybe someday i'll you know I'm, time's time's a ticking but maybe someday i'll get to share the stage with him yeah well i think at this rate it'll definitely have to be at the uh at the olympia right because nick uh i don't think he's taking anything less yeah, so that's going to be a tall task for me, but uh, I'll give her hell. That's right, man. Okay, um, let's let's. I want to talk about uh, uh, coaching here for 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 a couple minutes, and then we'll get into your pro debut, and then we'll wrap it up. We've already been going for almost an hour, which time flies when you're just talking to another dude about bodybuilding, right? Uh, but anyways, <laughs> now before we before we hit record, I, I asked you, you know, just confirm uh, who your coach was. Uh, Dom Kuza, and uh, you said that this was actually like the, I mean, you had that guy give you that diet for your first show, but this is like actually the first coach that you, you've hired and, and worked with. So, and that's, I would say that's pretty unique, especially nowadays, everybody seems to have a coach from, from the get go. So first of all, my question is Todd, uh, uh, why, why did you wait so long to hire a coach or why did you decide that you were going to just prep yourself through all these years? And then why now hire a coach and, and, and why Dom? Because until I reached out to you, I didn't even know, I never even heard of him. So, uh, yeah. What say you on those uh, couple questions? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, back in my day, right. Like, <laughs> like era, all these coaches weren't around, right. Like, like in the early two thousands, early 2010s, right. Like, you had like the Fockries and uh, 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 who am I thinking of? The Chris uh, Aceto. Yeah, like Chris Aceto and, and, and uh, George Farah. And, and it's like, like those were like the only coaches, right? And you reached out to my, I remember reaching out to these guys because I'm like, well, if I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hire, you know, some dude from the gym that, you know, that I can be, that I don't, that I think is kind of a dumbass. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to hire a coach just, just because, right? So if I'm going to hire a coach, I'm going to hire somebody that I, uh, that I respect and think is, is going to really be beneficial to me. You know, and I reach out to these guys and it's like, oh, I'm booked. Oh, uh, it, it's going to be like 10 grand a year for me. And I, ex- you know, I need six months paid up front. And it's like, at that point in time, I'm like, well, screw, I, I, I can't do that, right? Like, I'm just not going to be able to do that. So I just, I co- I've coached myself and prepped myself um, the whole time, right? And in even, you know, turning pro, like I kind of alluded to, like I prepped myself and 
and I and I just in retrospect, I'm like, man, I I should have done so much better, right? Like I was I was in gnarly shape. I got myself in great shape. I was the best condition guy there, but I was flat as f, right? Like I was just like I got by on structure and condition, and it's like, man, if I could just have a little bit of fullness, a little bit of pop, a little bit of of, of di- dimension to me more than what I, what I had, um, man, what, what, what could I do? Right. Um, so that's where kind of Dom comes in. Like, you know, he's local, right. He's here in Michigan. He's in the Detroit area and I've run into him many times at shows and different gatherings and whatnot. And I've always kind of hit it off with them and gotten a good vibe from, from him. Um, and it found him to be extremely knowledgeable, right? Like, like I found myself asking him questions before I was a coach, like about certain things, health related, supplement related that like, I just really respected his opinion on those things. And then combined with like, man, he's a good dude. And I like talking with him and man, like, I, I think he's an honest guy, right? Like that, that was important. So I, I just got to the point where I was like, Hey, Dom, dude, do you want to help me? <laughs> He's like, yeah, hell yeah, let's do it. Right. So yeah. And it's been, it's been a great experience. Um, you know, Dom, Dom has just helped me to be as productive and optimal as can be for the past. You know, I think it's been a little over a year probably that we've been working together. Um, and it's just been, it's been a great experience so far. So I'm, I'm really, really excited to see, uh, you know, just how it all turns out here come five weeks from now. Okay. Do you wish you would have hired a coach earlier in your career? And then secondly, how has Dom helped you take it to another level in terms of uh, being a, a bodybuilding athlete? Yeah, I do. I wish I would have hired somebody years ago. I, I think I could have. I wish I would have hired Dom with the knowledge that he has now, <laughs> you know, five years ago. Uh, but back then he was, I don't even know if he was coaching back then. He's pretty young. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what was the second part of the question? I'm sorry. No, no, you're, 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 you're absolutely fine. Uh, how, how has uh, Dom kind of, do you feel up to this point, helped you take it to another a level as a as a bodybuilding athlete i mean just he's very meticulous about everything right um you know i we know every gram of everything that goes into my body um and, and it's been that way throughout the off season right so it's just like it's been a relief for me to not have to think about things or at least not think about things to the extent um, that I used to and have somebody that's just like making the decisions and I can ask a couple questions. He'll always answer them. Okay. makes sense. I'm done. I'll do it. Right. Um, so it's just, it's just been like optimizing every single day, every single week, right? Like every single week throughout the off season, the goal was, okay, I'm going to check in with them and there's going to be a change, right? There's going to be an improvement. So there was never, there was never like a stagnant week. Like I never wanted to let him down, to be honest with you. Very cool, man. Okay. Five weeks out from what uh, competition for your pro debut? Yes. The Legion pro out in Reno. So, so talk about how has prep gone up to this point? Um, you're, You're five weeks out. What is your personal goal for your pro debut? Yeah, so prep has been really solid so far. Uh, I'm way bigger than I've ever been. Um, Pretty damn lean, right? At five weeks out, like I've got glutes, I've got a lot of hamstring detail. I've got lower back detail. I've got, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty damn close to being like ready. Right. Um, so we're ready way out, way ahead of time here. 
Um, I feel really good about just like, okay, we're going to go from lean to like freaky and then Dom make me fucking full. Right. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I I guess my, so my realistic goals, you know, I'm doing the masters, the 35 and over that's going to be on Friday on my expectation there is to win. Like I, I, I want to win on Friday and then uh, Saturday's an off day. And then Sunday is going to be the open. You know, I, I would be, I think I would be happy if I got like, if I got the first call out, right? Like if I'm in that first call out, I think that uh, is a realistic way for me to say like um, that that was successful. Obviously I want better than that, but I think that that would be, that would be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm accepting of this. Perfect. Okay. We're going to start kind of heading towards the finish line, Todd. Um, you know, you, you said that you're, you're 38, uh, just like for all of us, uh, the clock is ticking, right? And, uh, what before you're, before you, you, you are done competing, um, what would you have liked to have, have, have accomplished within the IFBB? Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to sound crazy, but I'd like to win a pro show, right? Like I, I, I'd like to win a pro show and, uh, I mean, I'm not going to be Mr. Olympia. I'm not, not, I'm too late in the game. I'm too beat up. (laughs) Right. Um, but, but I think I still got enough to, to win a pro show. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I got approved as a a judge, so I'm judging NPC shows now, um, you know, trying to be an ambassador of our sport, trying to help grow our sport locally, um, help promote it and and just be a positive image of what bodybuilding is. Right. Um, I think we kind of get a bad rap, right. Um, Rightfully so, maybe in some in some regards, but I'd like to be a positive influence on the industry and our sport, and um, help to to grow it here and um, here and nationally. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's that's great, man. We we need more people like you. And I mean, from everything I know, I mean, Michigan has a a deep, rich history of bodybuilding, man. I mean, powerhouse is 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 originated out of Michigan. I mean it's it's got a deep deep history doesn't it yeah absolutely you're right right like powerhouse is out of michigan the headquarters the founders are here in the detroit area um yeah i mean the sport has always been very competitive here and and we're still we still have some really good bodybuilders um but i feel like it's just not as deep right like these shows that used to be 150 plus competitors for every one of these local shows are now like, I mean, you're having shows that have like 40, 60 people. And it's just, it, it's just a shame, right? Like I, I, I wish that we could get the competitors back. And I think the times are changing of what competitors maybe like want and expect from, from, from doing shows. Right. And I think, maybe we just need to kind of look at it a little bit differently and, and cater towards the, the needs of like, I hate to say it of millennials or Gen Zers or whatever, right? Like, cause they've got a different mentality and that's, that's the new customer, right. For the NPC and the IFBB. So I, I think that we need to kind of take a look at how do we, how do we gain some popularity from, that group of people, right? For sure. I, I think uh, definitely one of those, uh, you know, factors in, in these shows being smaller is first of all, uh, there's a lot more categories nowadays. So it's not just bodybuilding. We've got classic, we've got men's physique, uh, so on and so forth. And then also there are so many shows like just every weekend. I mean, literally, I mean, from springtime to, 
to winter time, you could compete every weekend if you wanted to in a, in a competition and it, it wasn't like that back in the day, you know? Yeah, no, I, I, I think you're right. Right. Like we've got 10 or 12 shows in Michigan throughout the summer, right? That's like maybe too much. Um, I think we could pull a few shows out and get better, better numbers for, for, for the, the totality. Um, but I guess, you know, I don't, I, that's above my pay grade, right? I'm not involved at that level, but I, I think you're onto something. I think you're spot on about that. There's just too many shows. All right, Todd, we're, we're going to wrap it up. Last question I've got for you. Uh, what do you feel like bodybuilding has given you or what do you feel like bodybuilding has taught you? So I think bodybuilding, it's just an analogy for life, right? Like if I, I try to keep, keep it simple, stupid, right? Like with everything in my life, I, it's like, okay, let's not overcomplicate it, right? Like you have a goal. How am I going to get there? Come up with a plan and then just execute. Now, in bodybuilding, it involves, you know, diet, exercise, supplements, sleep. In life, in work, it's like, okay, here, here's, here's my goal. I want to, um, you know, be the starter on my varsity football team. Well, how are we going to get there, right? You got to do the X, Y, and Z and just freaking do it, right? I want to go to college. Okay, here's the classes I need to pass. Here's the grades I need to get. Here's how much I need to study, yada, yada, right? Like, it's just, it's just the same, it's the same process, right? It's the same process. Fill in the blank with different letters. That's all it is. And that, and that's, that's what bodybuilding has taught me. Cool. Man, I, that's, it, that, that's, that's, that's a great way to end it, Todd. I, I love that, man. Um, bodybuilding is an analogy for life, dude. That's, that's, that's super cool. Um, all right, Todd, first of all, I just want to say thanks for coming on You're five weeks out. Uh, Labor Day uh, today, you took some time out of your uh, schedule to chat with with myself and behind the muscle. So uh, I just want to say thank you so very much, man. Um, before I do a quick outro, I want to give you the opportunity uh, to share any final thoughts, any final words, any shout outs that you have. I'm going to turn it over to you. I'll do a quick outro and that'll be a wrap. Yeah, Quentin, uh, I just want to say thank you once again for having me on. It's been a pleasure. It's been fun. Um, you know, I appreciate the, the support and the exposure and, uh, hopefully we can, hopefully we can come through and, uh, you know, bring something special to the stage in a few weeks. Um, yeah, shout out to a, a few people, Dom Kuza, my coach, appreciate him a lot. Um, my girlfriend, Alea, she's also my training partner, um, trains harder than any dudes that I know, to be honest with you. Um. And, uh, it, it, you know, I, I have to also thank um, Jeff Saigo. He's a photographer, videographer that has uh, become a friend and has always really, like, um, done a lot of work with me for me um, to help promote um, myself and, and a lot of other local bodybuilders. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the gym, the, the owners of the gym that I go to, it's called The Gym in Flint. Um, the owner of Fenton Powerhouse, um, another gym that I go to, um, and they've always both, you know, supported me and helped me along the way. Uh, so appreciate them and thanks. And, uh, that's all I got for you. Awesome, man. Uh, thank you so much, Todd. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Quentin. Have right, a good you're one. welcome for sure. All of you who are tuning into another episode of behind the muscle podcast, I just want to say. Thank you so very much. I appreciate all of you. I value all of you. A couple of quick things here as we wrap up this great conversation with Todd today. If you have not done so already, please go to YouTube. Uh, if you're not on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you are watching, listening to this on YouTube, if you haven't done so already, hit that uh, subscribe button. That's really important because I release all these episodes first on YouTube and then I'll distribute them to iTunes, CastBox, Podbean and some of the other major podcast platforms uh, where you can find Behind the Muscle podcast. And then please take this episode with Todd, share it on your Instagram stories. Make sure you tag 
Todd, uh, make sure you go ahead and tag his coach, uh, Dom Kuza, and make sure you also tag Behind the Muscle podcast. That'd be greatly appreciated. It's an awesome way for people that have not heard of or found out about Behind the Muscle podcast to, to find out about it, uh, listen, watch, and be positively impacted uh, by these coaches and athletes, bodybuilding stories that they're sharing on Behind the Muscle podcast. So make sure you share this uh, episode specifically on your Instagram stories. And then finally, I will leave you all with this. Remember, behind the muscle, there's always a story. We'll catch you guys later.